Hi everybody, happy Friday. It is, let me take my glasses off. It is Friday, first Friday in October, and we are going to talk about apples. You like apples? How about them apples? All right, so we got, I have so much on the list, and I thought I'll only make one cocktail, and I'll only make one thing, and now I have a whole array in front of me and behind me and on the side of me and in front of me of stuff to make apples with. Um, I don't remember the last time I went apple picking. It could have been eight years ago with my mother and the girls. Um, we come home with way too much apples. So if that's you, <laughs> this show is for you. We have some old ones. We have some new things, some fun things, um, fun ideas for parties. So let's see where our apples fall and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is our apples. You got your Golden Delicious, you got your Gala, you got your red, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank. You know, the red one. <laughs> and the best one for fall is the Honey Crisp. Um, I think you can also use the Pink Ladies are wonderful. But the Honey Crisps are great for infusing and for dipping and for all of our fun stuff. So, hello Diane, how are you? I hope all is well with you and Bella. Um, we are going to, who else is there? Eileen, hi Eileen. Um, the first thing we're gonna talk about are, I thought this was interesting, I was looking up apple drinks and I actually found two that were from totally different sites, totally different days, I was just browsing. One is a take on an old fashioned and one is a take on a whiskey sour. So, instead of using whiskey, we are going to use apple brandy. Now, for the first one that I'm calling our fashionably fall apple, um, you would use two ounces of Laird's Apple Jack. Nobody knows exactly what the secret ingredient is in Laird's Apple Jack, um, but I can tell you it's better than apple brandy. I just don't happen to have some. So all of the recipes are gonna be uploaded right after this under files. So if you go right under the cover page, you scan across and swipe left and you'll find a page called files and that's every single recipe I've ever done here. So tonight we are going to do, um, we are going to use apple brandy because that's what I have. So to mimic Laird's Applejack, which is a Monmouth County where we live, a Monmouth County exclusive in New Jersey is Laird's Applejack. I think it's, God, I think it's 100 years old. I'm not sure, 18 something. Um, so when you want to mimic Laird's Applejack or more of a spicier thing than just a brandy, you would use um, one and a half of the brandy and a half ounce of the whiskey. Let me just get my shaker. You couldn't think I would remember everything now, would you? I have 80 different setups here. I can't remember everything. So into this glass, we are going to put a shaker of ice. All right, that's enough. And we'll do two ounces of the Laird's or one and a half. of the apple, oh, it smells so good. It smells like fall, y'all. And then a half an ounce only of, um, this is an Irish whiskey. You can absolutely use an American whiskey. Doesn't have to be anything special. All right, let's move that out of the way. So one and a half of the brandy to one half, half of the whiskey. Move my ice thing. I have so much here. Now we are going to take some fresh lemon juice. And for this, you want three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. So let's get it in my squeeze. Oh, geez. I knew I did it in the wrong way. All right. It just came out of the wash. All right. So that's about a half. And this is great because you get all those pits and it's really simple to wash. So that's perfect. Uh, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Please try to use fresh. Um, half ounce of orange juice. That's the only thing I don't have, so I'm leaving that out. I thought I had a jar, not a jar, um, a quart in the other fridge and I didn't. So let's pretend, put in a half ounce of orange juice. 
And I actually put a question mark on it, like, do you even need it? Um, because an old-fashioned obviously doesn't have orange juice. Now we're gonna use a half ounce of pure maple syrup. And for maple syrup, just, let's see, this is just organic maple syrup. It's really good. Don't use pancake syrup. If you only have pancake syrup, then just throw some agave in here. Um, and two dashes of Angostura bitters. I've talked about them at nauseum, so I'm not gonna bring them up again. Not tonight, anyway. All right. And now, all we do is shake. And you know, Susie don't use the ice from the shaker. We use fresh ice, right? So let's get that ice. Now this wouldn't be just a fall, fashionably fall apple if it wasn't fashionably fashionably we are going to put a dash and this is actually a measuring spoon for a dash we're going to put a dash of nutmeg so that's just plain old ground nutmeg if you don't have it pick some up because falls falls here and all right red delicious there you go there's my memory Let's slice a nice piece of Red Delicious. So after the shaker, then you add the nutmeg. And I don't know if you can see it. Beautiful cocktail. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. I know. I love everything I make. I think the only thing I didn't like was that grog drink with the whiskey and the bourbon and the red wine. Mm. Okay, it's excellent. Forget the orange juice, you don't need it. Let me just one second move everything out the way. Let's move it out the way because we don't need it. And I don't want to use it again. Hi Vince, how are you? Hi Deborah and Meg, how are you Eileen? Okay, nice to see you all. So Red Delicious as a garnish, it goes really nice. I think I put a little too much nutmeg, but maybe use a smidgen instead of a dash. Alrighty, very good. Now let's move on. I'm gonna talk through, no, I'll make this one too. What the heck? All right, let me just rinse this out. Don't want to waste it. All right. I have nutmeg on my lip. Okay, now we are going to do our sour apple, which is a take on a whiskey sour, which made me so reminiscent of my mom and Thanksgiving because I guess, I guess this is where I got it from, making drinks. Oh my God, I was probably eight, 10, 12. I always helped my mother set up for Thanksgiving. She always had Thanksgiving at our house and she always worried about the food so much. And even at a young age, I helped make the cocktails. <laughs> Go figure, okay, mm. okay. So she used to use that bartender's blue box of whiskey sours. You used to take all four envelopes. You used to dump it in a container with ice. You used to mix the whiskey in and a little bit of water and some maraschino cherries and oranges. And that's what everyone had when they came to our house, whiskey sours. So I was laughing when I saw this recipe and I said, oh my God, this is my mother's whiskey sour. So in a regular whiskey sour, you would use egg white, a pasteurized egg white. You would use whiskey, lemon, simple syrup, and then cherries and oranges. In our sour apple, we're gonna go for, for go the egg because I don't wanna mess with egg whites, although I love going to a bar and having a nice egg white in my drink. We are going to do, once again, we are gonna fill our glass with ice and we are gonna take, this one is only apple brandy. This one does not need the whiskey, okay? So that's two ounces of apple brandy. Now this is not, this is just a cheap bargain. I don't know, it was, it was on the shelf in the liquor store and it was not the cheapest, but it certainly wasn't a, a nice um, apple brandy. I don't know what brands there are of apple brandy. I'm not an apple person, but I love an apple cocktail in the fall. All right, so that's two ounces of apple brandy and then I have leftover simple syrup from the other day. So that is a half ounce and I'm gonna measure it so it's not too sweet. Certain drinks 
you can measure and certain drinks you really don't have to you know like the maple syrup you just know to pour it if it's not sweet enough pour a little but with simple syrup when nothing is in your drink but brandy simple syrup and lemon juice you want to make sure that the um measurements go okay so for this one i am going to put my little juicer on top of my measuring and i'm going to take my lemon and i'm going to juice it right on here to make sure i don't get too much lemon juice because i used two ounces of apple brandy half ounce of simple syrup half ounce of lemon juice that's all that goes in here all right a lot of pits in this lemon there you go in there let me let me start talking quicker or else we're never going to get through the show hi robin i'm making i made a uh, carol's whiskey sours but i did it with an apple so you'll have to watch at the end and redo it all right now i'm simply i'm making this more like a martini like almost like an apple martini but it's got the brandy simple syrup lemon juice and a pretty light twist and this is a coupe glass, coup glass, C-O-U-P. All right, so cheers. Oh, it's so perfect. If you're having friends over this weekend or in the fall at all, this is another winner. Oh my goodness, okay. Yay, delicious. So we had our take on an old fashioned and we made a fashionably fall apple and we had our take on a whiskey sour and we made it a sour apple. All right, and if you wanted to make a uh, apple spritzer, like a white wine spritzer, but with apples, you would take two ounces of the apple pie vodka I'm gonna make, two ounces of apple juice. This is Martinelli's. This is pure apple juice or apple cider. And you would just simply take a pint glass of ice or a nice white, white wine glass would be great. Fill it halfway with ice, put two ounces of the apple pie vodka, two ounces of the apple cider or really nice apple juice, and then um, just give it a stir. Top it off with as much club as you want, either, you know, two ounces, four ounces, six ounces, depending on how weak you want your drink or how strong, and then garnish with a red delicious apple slice. So there's three fall drinks in a nutshell. Boom, you're all ready. If you have apple brandy and apple pie vodka, you're set. Um, we'll get to more of the fall drinks next week. I have a plethora of them. So many fall drinks, I didn't know what to pick tonight, so I just stuck to apples. All right, so next, I think next I'm going to do my apple pie infused vodka. Okay, so for this, I didn't have the simple syrup. We had to make cinnamon simple syrup. So the way I did that, let's see, where's my ingredients? I took here we go right here. Imagine that, they're already lined up. I took a half a cup of water and put it in a medium heat, a, pan, a medium sized pan over medium heat, and then I added a half a cup of brown sugar. Now you can certainly use this with regular sugar. I just re reached for my sugar and nothing says fall to me like apples and brown sugar. So you reduce it the same way we make all our simple syrups. I know I go on and on, but maybe there's someone new here that doesn't know how to make simple syrup. I took equal parts water and sugar, reduced it down to half, and then I took it off the heat, and then you can add your cinnamon sticks when you take it off the heat. All right, so that would be you would just let it sit while you get all your other stuff ready, okay? So took it off the heat, added my cinnamon sticks. Now this is for like a half a recipe um, because I'm not sure if Matt or Tom or anyone else in the house will like apple, apple pie vodka, so I'm just making a little to test it out. So for the recipe I'm doing, I'm doing two um, cinnamon sticks, half a cup of water, half a cup of sugar, boil it down, take it off the heat, put the cinnamon sticks in and let it cool. Now we're gonna take a jar, any clean jar. I've been saving all my pickles and beets and sauerkraut, everything jars, and getting ready for fall. I don't can things. I don't wanna give anyone botulism, but I do infuse things and I make my own pickle hot sauce and stuff like that. So try to recycle. You don't need to buy new and it's better than plastic. 
All right, that's your lesson. <laughs> so now we're gonna let the cinnamon sit, sit in there until it's cool. I turned it off at 6.30, so it should be cool by now. Now we're gonna take apples. I am using two apples that aren't very pretty, but I got them at the farmer's market and they smell delicious. Now it depends, so here you go. Where's my small apple? I think I used it already. But you have an apple like this and an apple like this. Well, the other apple was half the size. So if it says two apples and you have a huge one and a huge one is the only thing that fits in the jar, then just use one apple. If your apples are tiny, you might need three depending on the size. So I am filling this whole thing up with this apple, okay? Now you are going to take um, your simple syrup. You only need two ounces of it in this jar. All right, so this is cool, don't worry. I'm not hurting myself. Let me get my tongs. Where's my tongs? Put your cinnamon sticks in. You can add another one if you want. I like cinnamon, I don't love cinnamon, so I'm just using two. Look at that nice brown simple syrup. That's gonna make it gorgeous. And if you don't have simple syrup, maybe you can still infuse your, um, you can still infuse the vodka with apples. It just won't taste like maybe apple pie vodka, but that's okay, all right? So that's all we have in there, the cinnamon, Cinnamon simple syrup, one large apple and two cinnamon sticks. And now we are gonna take our vodka. I don't even have to measure. I'm just gonna, it could be one cup, it could be two cups. I'm doing that much just to cover it. Make sure my apples are stuck. And this is only for home use. If you're serving to friends, you have to use utensils. All right. All right, look at that already. Okay, so that's your apple pie infused vodka. So you're gonna put this tight, you're gonna put it in your fridge for at least 48 hours. Um, I've never made it before, so I don't know if after 48 hours if the apples are gonna turn brown and mushy. So um, check it if at 48 they're still good and you want it even stronger and you don't need it yet. Keep it in there longer, but I think two days is perfect, and then it will keep in the fridge for two to three weeks after you take the stuff out. So it's been in there for two days, 48 hours. You take this, you strain it out, you save the apples for something else. Maybe you make a boozy applesauce with grilled pork chops, that would be lovely. And you pour it into a clean jar, and you write on it, or you label it, because believe me, if you make a few different things, you're gonna forget what you made and you'll be like is that the cinnamon or is that the apple so here's your apple pie infused vodka which will then be used for what you call it um your apple pie spritzer simply two ounces of your apple pie vodka and um what did we say a little apple cider and club soda and you're done or if you if you like it just leave out the apple cider and put a shot of that and club soda it's, it's great, or just sip it, or use it for your any recipe you want. All right, that's your apple pie vodka. I've talked at nauseam about that now. <laughs> All right, so now let's get to the piece de la resistance. I made, um, I'm gonna do this with my leftover apple so I don't have to ruin another apple. We are going to make drunken apple skewers for when you have people over. So I bought these, which now everything is apples. So these are for apple, um, caramel apples or um, candy apples, but they're 99 cents. They're extra thick. I think they would be great if you soak them overnight and use them for pork or beef or lamb on the grill. Um, they're thick enough for that, but I'm not making candy or caramel apples. I am making Apple, drunken apple skewers. You could have this for a party. You could have a kid's table, and then you could put the other apples on the other table for the adults, just don't screw it up. So all you simply do is cut your apple. I think it's best to have the fat part down because that's what you're gonna be dipping in. Sorry, my battery thing's low. So these are just regular six inch bamboo skewers that I've used all summer. I think 
the perfect size. I'm gonna speed it up because I think I'm going on too long. Don't wanna bore everybody. All right, just, just like that. Make sure the stick isn't sticking out. All right. And then you take a clean mason jar, which is the perfect size. You put them in. You pour vodka in to cover them up to the top. And then you leave them sit for two hours. Now this is for serving and eating, so it does not need to be infused. You don't need to leave for 48 hours. Two hours is more than enough. I'm sure even after 45 minutes, it probably is enough. All right, then you're gonna take your platter. Now, of course, you can make as little or as much dipping topic, uh, not toppings, dippings as you want. So you have mini chocolate chips, you have little shredded coconut, and this is really fine. I already put my hand in it, so now I have to eat it. And then I get nervous because Barb's watching and she's like, don't put your hands in things. And here I have chocolate graham crackers crushed up. Um, the other choices I was going to do if I was doing this for a party tonight, if I had more people here, I would probably do six toppings. I would use um, Halloween colored sprinkles, brown and orange, or fall colored sprinkles, brown, orange, yellow, green. And then I would also do, I have some leftover shortbread Girl Scout cookies, which would be great, mushed up and um masked just like the crumbs the graham crackers and there was one other thing i thought of oh reese's pieces they would look adorable on this but for a smaller party three is fine for four people you're gonna have six people make three toppings and then i simply took my caramels put them in a bowl i don't use a double broiler i do them i did this a while ago so i hope it all right to dip them in um whatchamacallit, I do it in the microwave. I do it, if you're doing like, sorry, 10 of them, um, I only did five, because I don't know if anyone's gonna eat up here. Um, I add a little bit of butter and a tiny bit of water, and you nuke it for a minute, um, maybe even 30 seconds, depending on the heat of your microwave, the vats, wattage, and um, stir it with silicone, just like you would when you make the, anything with those candy wafers, it doesn't melt until you start stirring it. Take it out, stir it, put it in 30 seconds, and do it at half power, stir it, another 30 if you need it. Like I said, if you're doing half a bag or the whole bag, it'll take longer. I am only doing a few. You take your apples out of a V, which they, these would be way more. There'd be so much less vodka because they'd all be soaked up. And you just simply dip in your caramel yum and i think i'm gonna do it in caramel and coconut okay so this is a boozy apple skewer so it's like a fruit skewer you have in the summer only this one's fun mm. oh lordy i don't even think this was only in since six o'clock so less than an hour and they're already Oh my God, so much. It's like doing a shot. So I'm going to go back on what I said. I know I always do that. I'm going to go back on what I said and say, leave them in the fridge an hour to two hours. Very simple. And then if you don't want them soaking, you know, in the alcohol when your guests come, just put them out on the tray. Take them out of the vodka. Save your vodka. Because again, you can make more infused vodka from that. And you have a cute little adorable boozy apple. So I want to thank Robin. I think she told me about that one. And I want to cheers. Happy fall, y'all. Thank you for joining in on me with me on a Friday night, on a beautiful Friday. Let's see who else we have here. Oh, Robin says, yes. Um, another Robin. Hi, Robin Crocker. And Eileen Moyer. Moyer. So thank you for joining in. And happy fall, and we will see you soon.